Tis also the season to con the American people into thinking that poor people are stealing their money. House Speaker and King Republican Paul Ryan says that he'll be working on entitlement reforms for 2018. Now, don't get too excited. He's not really going to make Donald Trump Jr. get a minimum wage job so he can see how shitty it is. You know, where we all watch Trump Jr. have a panic attack over an Egg McMuffin and spend his 30-minute break crying in front of everyone in the drive through lane screaming, I shouldn't have to work this hard for so little money. Well, no one does, Donnie. Now get back to the fryers. These burgers won't flatten themselves. Paul Ryan wants to cut Medicaid, Medicare, and any program that tries to help poor people sa to save the American budget. Now, this is not a new Republican tactic. This is the same tactic that's used every time it comes to actually helping people, equating social programs with robbing the American people and keeping the country in debt, creating a stigma towards anything that resembles compassion. So the only choice that's out there for the American people is cutthroat competition. Now, Ryan claims this is how you tackle debt and deficit. Well, while we're cutting things that create a deficit, how about we cut that overinflated war budget that keeps getting more and more bloated every single year? Or maybe the Republicans could come up with a tax bill that actually helps the American people instead of rehashing trickle-down economics, which has never worked because American capitalism works on greed, poverty, and debt. But that's the grand old party for you. There's only one word that truly describes this party. Old. And just the regular old, not the fancy kind with the E at the end of it. You can't really call them grand. I mean, no one really equates prestige or excellence with the party that had a hand in killing the middle class and wants to kill even more people with the wars they fund. And if Congress people like Paul Ryan think that the party is grand, that's because they have delusions of grandeur. They're only looking through the one eye that's located on the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. I mean, it's not really a party either, right? I mean, no one wants to invite the eradicator of compassion to the BYOB party where everybody is sharing their booze and their food and their drugs and... If a Republican showed up, they'd probably try to figure out how to sell the party to the next highest bidder, tax every drop of booze, and create a crisis for profit with all the drugs at the party. So all they are is old, constantly convincing you that ideas that didn't work 30 years ago will work today. Trickle-down economics would work if we were able to agree that there are some principles of socialism that have value in this system. If trickle-down is to work, then the ultra-rich corporatists and capitalists would actually give those tax savings to help the American middle class buy those things that Ajit Pai wants us to get from the internet. You know, use the internet the way that the FCC really wants us to use it. We need the help of these trickle-down corporatists to do that. Help a jit pie, won't you? Won't you help a jit pie? You are literally his last hope, American corporatists. Basically, Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell would have to go through everybody's Amazon wish list and deliver those gifts to our homes, which means that there is a way for Santa to exist, and that is through real trickle-down and job creation. Well, uh, um, for like one day, for like a day. If, they, if that can exist for like a day, then yeah, we can all say that Santa is real. Also, it would mean that these corporations can't use their offshore tax havens that both the Paradise and the Panama Papers revealed and discussed. The next thing, just as important. They are going to give an incentive for companies that have earned profits over the last 20 years, but kept them in an account outside the United States. Not that many years ago, a law was written by these companies which said, if you earn profits abroad, which in these days American companies do a lot of,
and you keep the profits in an account overseas, you don't have to pay any profits tax at all. You only have to pay the profits tax if and when you bring the profits back into the United States, called repatriating your profits. So companies that either do a lot of business abroad or can fake the documentation, they don't pay any taxes until they bring it home. And so the Trump administration is saying, in order to get you to bring it home, we're going to give you a special deal. If you bring it home, say in 2018, you will only have to pay, and they're not negotiated that, 5% or maybe 10. And let's make sure we all understand. This is a reward for not paying taxes for 25 years because you didn't pay. Because remember, for 25 years, we're talking trillions. Who are the biggest holders of money abroad? Some of you have seen these stories. Google, Amazon, Apple, all of them. The ones with the social consciousness, who are concerned about the country and its future, are robbing you blind. Rewards for robbery. I mean, this is real, and the, the real entitlement problem. Thinking that you can hide your money and not contribute to the people that work for you and helped you make all that money you're hiding, right? And then, and then you get a reward for breaking the law. That's entitlement, and the Republicans are just fine with that. But if you're a widowed mother of three on welfare and Medicare, then you are said to be suckling at the raw teats of Mother America. Basically, these corporations learned their savings methodologies from pirates. They hid them in these islands and drew a map with dotted lines shaped like a middle finger to let the American people know that they're all about fucking us.